Peasy is just a nigga that just come from an area, man. It's just so dark. And just so happen to just overshadow that. Just come up out that you know what I'm saying? Just a young nigga that grew up and synced a lot. You know what I'm saying? And just was just smarter than everybody else, man. Just had a bigger vision of just seeing and want better and just, you know what I'm saying? Just took my life experience and put the shit in this music. Humble Soul, we checking back in, man. We taking a trip to Detroit, east side of Detroit, man, to be exact. We placing the spotlight on Detroit rapper, you know, on the living legend Peasy, you know. Yeah, I want to put something together on him, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in and rocking with a Humble Soul. Let's get into it. Just went and got a stamp, made it official, man. Ghetto boy, Team Eastside. I got it on there twice. Look, Team Eastside, Team Eastside, man. That means it's for life, nigga. When it's on there twice, that means it's for life. You did. You know how we play it. School bus inside this Cadillac. Five thousand for the Louis jacket with the hat to match. One twenty for the platinum roll. Ain't got no platinum plat. Thirty five hundred for my outfit. Wear shit once when I'm well back. Having a good heart and staying prayed up and doing right by people, you know, you get to. Gotta be Team God. So, you know, Peasy came up on the east side of Detroit, Six Mile, Cedar Grove Street, you know. It's a block on the east side of the city where his mom's side of his family came up on, you know. They owned multiple houses on that block and multiple family members, you know, um, stayed on that block. You know what I'm saying? From his, um, obviously his mom, his grandma, yeah, aunts, you know, cousins, you know, just to paint the picture of how close-knit that they were on that block. Yeah, because my whole family from one street, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody drug dealers, so. It was like natural, like seeing natural, it was natural. He also, you know, maneuvered on the west side of Detroit as well because that's where his father's side of the family, you know, pretty much came up. So he got to experience both worlds, the east and the west, and develop friendships, you know, on both sides of the city. But Cedar Grove would become, you know, the place that helped him turn into the person he is today. If be stingy with the hoes, I know if it lead a day, we gon' stay at ten toes. See the grove at the back house with ten bows. Cameras by the windows, never know what I'm into. Something interesting to, to note, to point out is that, you know, PZ, he started rapping around 2004 while he was attending high school. You know, he got suspended from school one day and decided to write a song about, you know, that whole experience, man. And after that, you know, he he um he really began to experiment more and more with writing. And around this time, you know, coming up, he's listening to you know artists like DMX, Jada Kiss, Fabulous, you know, um, Dipset, Jay Z, you know, as well as you know local Detroit artists. He made it to the 11th grade uh, in high school, but. He never was really feeling it, you know, he never really had a passion or an interest in school. And around this time, he's going through a lot personally, you know, with his family and his, his living situation, you know. He dropped out of high school and, you know, started hustling. After he dropped out of high school, he was walking one day when he saw the brother of Team Eastside, Snoop, um, driving by and the, the dude stopped and asked him, you know, what he was doing. And if he wanted to ride with him to go pick Snoop up from high school. And he said, yeah, he would ride. And, and just some back, some background on that, man. You know, um, Peasy and Snoop, you know, they both um, kind of connected, you know, from Cedar Grove, from being on Cedar Grove. Like I mentioned, Peasy came up on Cedar Grove and Snoop's grandmother stayed on Cedar Grove. And he would, so he would be over there a lot. And they pretty much um, met that way and, and built their own little bond and became best friends in so many words. But 
you know, he ended up riding with uh, Snoop's brother to pick him, pick up Snoop. Snoop gets in the whip. He asked Peasy, you know, if he wanted to ride with him to the studio because he was gonna record some music. And Peasy decided to uh, tag along with him, man, and went to the studio. Ended up writing a verse, recording it, and he was surprised by the by the reaction that he received from the people in the studio, man, and it really hyped him up. He liked how he sounded on the beat, and from there, you know, the rest is history. Team Eastside, Warner, Lil Perry. I'm Snoop, Six Mile Terry, girl. Rich. What? Watch out, man. I'm Richie Rich, man. Six Mile, Team Eastside. It's all Richie. Rick, King Hong. I've been rapping since like middle school, high school. I just always had a passion for rapping. Snoop inspired me, really, if y'all really want to know the truth. I ain't gonna lie. Peasy inspired me. Motherfuckers who fuck with us inspired me, though. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Snoop put me on my first track. About four years ago, four or five years ago. That's how I got off to this shit. So now we get into Team Eastside. So Peasy, um, like I mentioned, was already connected with Snoop. But he ended up linking with Lil Perry or Lil P. And Lil P helped bring Dame Dot along because they both went to school together from what I understand. And you know, some of the other people came into the group as well, like Reek, um, Babyface Ray, D-Nice. And I think down the line, you know, Lou Graham came into the picture after they had already started releasing music. Around, you know, 2011, they released their first project, which was um, We Here. You know, they put it out independently. They didn't have like a uh, have like a real record label backing them or nothing like that. But uh, you know, they selling the CDs around the city. But it was the strip clubs to really help them develop a buzz. One strip club in particular, you know, stands out. Um, it was called 007. It was one of the biggest strip clubs in Detroit at the time. And you know, Team Eastside, man, trying to get their name and their faces out there would go up to the strip club, give the music to the DJ, man, DJ Eel Will, and you know, ask them to play their, play their music. Man, he would rock with them and Put it on in the strip club, man. All the East Side dudes in the strip club would start throwing their money. You know, the, um, the a lot of the dancers would be um, doing their sets to the song, you know, requesting a song to dance to it. And it helped their music, man, really generate a buzz, man, and take off in the city. And this is around the time when it wasn't a lot of artists really putting on for the East Side. You know, the, the last people who was kind of shining was the East Side Cheddar Boys, as far as like on the street independent level in Detroit so this was kind of a breath of fresh air for the um, for that side of the city so you know a lot of people were really behind them man, they ain't nigga got their own style man man we from the hood for real for real man like, everything we don't lie about shit like yeah, everything we talking about really going on like we really did this shit hands on y'all really really, really niggas going fed time for this shit niggas got killed behind this shit niggas we fuck with so you know no exaggerating we ain't trying to knock no other niggas though. No you know what I'm saying? Know, but we really living this shit, seeing it, did it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, so they, they dropped the project. They getting their face out there, man, um, doing shows, all of that, you know. And they continue to put projects out, you know. In 012, they dropped two projects, you know, Welcome to Our Side, Bag Life. And um, a couple of years later, you know, they put out Ghetto Boys. But after that, they decided to focus on their solo careers. And unfortunately, around this time, man, you know, even one of the members of Team Eastside, he was, you know, shot and killed, Reek. So that kind of, you know, impacted them, man. And, um, you know, kind of messed up the flow a little bit, but they they still didn't let it, let it stop them, you know what I'm saying, from pursuing their dreams and really putting on for the Eastside, man, and keeping his name alive, man. Making history in the city, you know. Uh, 
But that Smith and Wesson gotta keep it close to me. Cause on some real shit, I still be stressing over Reek. I miss my nigga. Why them pussies had to get my nigga? All these fuck boys around high as in my nigga. Peasy was actually the first to go solo in 2014. He released his album Mud Music. And for those who don't know, you know, Mud, that's pretty much a slang term for methicine, codeine, or, you know, also known as lean. You know, at the time, you know, people like Peasy and just Team Eastside as a whole, Icewear Vezo, etc., you know, they were heavy on the lean in Detroit. And that was, you know, flowing through the music. They actually have um, said they think they popularized that, you know, and brought that culture to Detroit to help magnify it in Detroit in particular, you know, because it was already heavy in places like Texas and even um, Philly, you know, Memphis. But as far as like Detroit, especially on the east side, t people like Team East Side, Icewear Bezo really pushed that culture, you know. Like if you go look at my old album covers, all that shit got purple activism and like bass shit on it. Like Team Eastside albums got the activism shit on it, bro. You gotta think I've been drinking lean since 2003. I'm older than uh, uh, most of the bros. But yeah, Peasy put out Mud Music in 2014, and that solo project really showed how talented he was. Oh, something I meant to say too, man, about that, that whole lean culture. You know, Peasy in multiple interviews, man, has been open about how at one point in time he was addicted to lean and he said he's um spent as much as a million dollars, more than a million dollars, man, over the years that he was sipping it, you know, sipping it real crazy. So just putting that into perspective, it's understandable why he would name his name his first album Mud Music, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But yeah, um, to this day, you know, that's one of the albums that's still viewed as a classic in Detroit, you know. After the success of Mud Music, PZ, he decided to start his, um, his own label, Boys Entertainment, you know. And um, he was pretty much influenced by Icewear Vezo, who had already had his, you know, Iced Up Records um, imprint going and was really putting out projects, man, and pushing hard, you know, for the city. But yeah, Vezo, he said um, Vezo was one of the people who influenced him to start his own label, you know? And that's what he did, man. From there, he started turning up, you know, doing features, you know, doing shows, performing not just in Detroit, but um, different areas, you know, especially like places like Milwaukee and stuff like that. And he, he, you know, he continued to drop projects, man. It's like he couldn't stay out the studio albums like mud music 2 you know um mud music 2 reloaded mud sweat and tears number one ghetto boy mud in mud out you know um winter grind joint albums like ghetto wave with babyface ray you know so you know i can keep going you know he was really going in man it was just prolific but everything wasn't just wasn't just sweet with his career man if, he was going through his own challenges too, man. Bumping his head, going through ups and downs. They are behind some of the most violent crimes on the streets of Metro Detroit. But police and federal law enforcement agencies know where they operate and they're working to take them down. Tonight, Simon Shaykat takes us inside the fight, only on 7. Narcotics trafficking, home invasions, carjacking, armed robberies, and murders. In the heart of the Motor City, they are committing the kinds of crimes that strike fear into the community. Most of us have been just outraged by how many young people have been caught in the crossfire of gang violence. So many kids, young people, babies. The Six Mile Cheddar Grove Gang, known to rule the area near East McNichols and Kelly, and Houston Whittier and Chalmers. <laughs> Old school Chevys, but had all new choppers. Had to send the fans in, DPD couldn't stop it. And I mentioned that he was, um, he represents Cedar Grove, which is also known as Cheddar Grove, and that area has its own clique, you know, Six Mile Cheddar Grove, which he was affiliated with. You know, these are all people who he came up with, developed friendships with, a brotherhood with, in so many words, and his affiliation as well as his music led to him being indicted, you know what I'm saying, by the feds. 
back in December of 2016, you know, the U.S. Attorney's Office for East Michigan announced the indictment of PZ, you know, and several other people in this RICO case. PZ's music and, and his rap videos were used against him, you know, and his co-defendants to pretty much showcase their affiliation to Six Mile Cheddar Grove. And just some background on the indictment, man, it actually all started from um, a broad day shooting back in December of 2015 um, at the Troster supermarket on the east side of Detroit, you know, during the shooting, um, unfortunately, two people were killed. You know, one was 21, the other one was 13. And there were two um, other people who were seriously injured. One of them was 13 and the other was seven years old, you know. And all this, you know, this happened broad daylight, you know, early afternoon. So it was multiple witnesses, man, traffic driving by, all of that, man. People out in the parking lot, sad situation, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, law enforcement in the area, man, they jumped on the case to investigate what was going on, man, looking for the shooters to arrest them and charge them. You know, the police ended up receiving multiple tips from different neighbors and people in the area or whatever. And a few months later, they ended up um, arresting two people. Attorney Barbara McQuaid knows what it takes to stop violent gangs, recently charging two members of the Six Mile Cheddar Grove gang in a shooting that killed a 13-year-old girl near a market on Hayes in the middle of the afternoon. We saw children sitting on the hood of a car as gunmen opened fire on the driver. 26-year-old Edwin Mills and 22-year-old Carlo Wilson, both of Detroit, now in custody for the December 1st shooting that also killed a 21-year-old driver. <laughs> The two people who were arrested for the, the shooting, both of them were connected to PZ and, you know, in, in Six Mile Cheddar Grove. One dude, he's known as um, Ed Boy. My nigga, man, I really, I really don't gotta call nobody when I'm in the hood, but when I'm in the hood, I'll just be calling my nigga Ed Boy. We get high. Yeah, Ed Boy, EB, yeah. baby. Y'all y'all know who I am, man. Yeah. Other dude, man, they call him Los. But they both were said to alleged to be the shooters, you know, in that, that whole broad day um, double homicide, man. And, um, you know, they were both indicted by the feds for the shooting and were charged with two counts of murder in aid of racketeering, racketeering conspiracy, assault with a dangerous weapon in aid of racketeering, as well as, you know, using a, a firearm during a crime of violence. So yeah, man, you know, um, after they were arrested and charged, the feds revealed that Ed Boy and Los were alleged members of Six Mile Cheddar Grove. A few months after Ed Boy and Los were charged, the feds unsealed a superseding indictment, you know, in December of 2016. And this added nine more people to the case, man, to the RICO case, who also represented Six Mile Cheddar Grove. According to the indictment, you know, the clique had a drug operation in Detroit that not only, you know, made money in Detroit, but in other areas, you know, other states uh, like Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and West Virginia. And, you know, when they initially hit him, you know, PZ, he wasn't on the, on the list, but when they did the superseding indictment back in December of 2016, his name was added. You know, the rest pretty much went downhill from there for him. You know what I'm saying? I've been more distressed. I took a loss and learned from it. Took it as a lesson. Wake up early, get into it. I ain't go to breakfast. Popping persons, drinking syrup, it be hard to sleep. Fizz hit you with some shit that's gonna be hard to beat. Soon as a nigga changes his life, it take you off the streets. You know, um, just talking about PZ and how he's been, he's mentioned Cedar Grove, Cheddar Grove throughout his music over the years. And that was pretty much used as evidence to show that he's affiliated as well as his rap video showing him with the co-defendants that were on the case with him. You know, for example, you know, less than two months before that whole shooting outside of that, that liquor store, PZ dropped a video on YouTube for his song, Before Rap. And on the song, you know, he raps about his life before jumping into the music game and specifically talks about Cheddar Grove and, you know, name drops. One of the two people who were caught for that shooting and arrested and charged for that shooting, which, which is Ed Boy. Got my sack in the bed, in the yard by the bush. My nigga Ed Boy sitting in the car with the fool. 
So the Fed said that just that that video and those lyrics were references to quote unquote racketeering activities, you know. Another video they used for the case is um Young Nigga World. They used that in the, the indictment as well. Niggas bite the swag so much, I should charge them. Yeah. Thousand yeah. pills stash in the secret compartment. If the feds knew about it, they'd give me me charges. I'm just trying That's another one, you know what I'm saying, that showed him with some of his co-defendants. And they said that the song, in so many words, supported the claims, man, that he was affiliated with, with Six Mile Cheddar Grove, man, and they were involved in street activity. And once again, you know, Ed Boy Los and others are are in the video. Another video, the video for Peasy's song, I'm Good Part 3 was also reportedly said to be used as evidence because it shows like a trap house that a couple of people on the indictment used, you know, to sell their drugs or whatever. Um, law enforcement were watching that particular house that was used in that video um, during the, the whole investigation, man, and they, they witnessed, you know, multiple drug transactions being made at the spot and um, saw the surveillance cameras and all of that and actually ended up executing a search warrant at that spot, man, and arresting two of the people on the on the case, Mikey Maid and R.B. And they seized, you know, you know multiple weapons, like around 9,000 in cash, heroin, weed, etc. So, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a good look at all, you know. Getting back to PZ in particular, you know, he pleaded guilty to racketeering conspiracy and turned himself in to serve, you know, um, his time back in 2019. He ended up serving, you know, 18 months in the feds. He didn't actually receive a higher sentence like some of some of his other co-defendants because he didn't have like a crazy criminal history or nothing like that, you know. Um, he hadn't been in a lot of trouble or nothing like that. You know, he was actually pretty much, man, successful on the underground level, especially, you know, locally in Detroit and the surrounding areas. So he was able to maintain, he was doing shows and paid thousands of dollars, you know, to perform and do features. You know, he's generating money from his projects and all of that, man. He just, you know, he was he was pretty much just guilty by association in so many words. While he was out, out on bail for his indictment, he was still releasing music. And around that time, he had actually connected with people like Payroll, man, from Dope Boys Cash Out. And they recorded a project, man, Ghetto Rich Niggas, before he got sentenced. And it, it actually came out, though, while he was locked up. But yeah, that was a dope look, man, because PZ and Payroll are definitely on a Mount Rushmore of a lot of people's list, man, when it comes to Detroit rappers, you know. This was all after Dope Boys Cash Out and Team Eastside had squashed their beef, you know. I didn't really go into too much detail about it, but they had their own feud going on. You know, a couple of altercations had occurred and all of that. They really didn't rock with each other for years. Um, but yeah, man, around the time that PZ was out on bail, out on bun, you know, everything had been squashed and, you know, PZ Payroll and T Grizzly, they did the track um, too quick at the video shoot, you know, all the crews were around each other for the first time since that whole beef had taken place. Well, not T Grizzly, but as far as like Payroll and um, PZ. But yeah, you know, they even posted pictures online of PZ, I swear, Vezo, Payroll, and T Grizzly. And that was a great look for the city, man, because um, it was clear that they would be a lot stronger together versus, you know, at odds, you know what I'm saying? And it had already lingered for so many years. So it, it was just a good look, man, because they all are talented and they all bring some dope to the game, you know, um, and they all put on for Detroit, you know, east and the west, all the entire city, you know what I'm saying? We begin here at 530 with a popular Detroit rapper lost to gun violence. Team Eastside Snoop had a career on the rise, but now it's all come to a very sad end. Man, I also want to say, man, while um, PZ was out, you know, back in 2018 before he went away, you know, he lost, you know, him and Team Eastside, man, they lost, you know, Snoop 
you know, which was unfortunate. You know, I mentioned that Snoop is actually the, the person who is responsible for PZ really being in the studio and really taking rap seriously. He ended up taking it more seriously than Snoop. But, you know, Snoop is the first person to put him in the studio. But, yeah, unfortunately, you know, Snoop was murdered, you know, in Detroit, man. You know, in August of 2018, according to reports, you know, Snoop had just left a home studio where Peasy and some other people were there. I mean, you know, um, you know, Snoop wasn't recording music, but he was just there, man, you know, vibing out, mingling, you know, and doing all of that, man, with the folks. And he ended up leaving. And when he walked to his car to get in his car, somebody approached him or some people approached him or whatever and tried to rob him, man, for his new watch and all of that and um, ended up shooting him. And that was a major hit to um, PZ, man, who pretty much viewed Snoop as his best friend and they hung around each other on a daily basis from what I understand. PZ ended up actually getting a tattoo um, in memory of Snoop on his face, on the side of his face, a tattoo that says Soda. He put a, um, a song together, man, called Letter to Soda, a song and a video, all of that, man. It just continued to keep his name alive in his music, man. So, you know, R.I.P. to um, Reek, R.I.P. to Team Eastside Snoop. I think it'd be dope, man, uh, to highlight that PZ has an ear for music, talented artists. He's responsible for introducing the world, man, to one of the Midwest's most influential artists, man, over the last couple of years, Rio the Young OG, who um, comes from Flint, Michigan. PZ was introduced to his music. He had already been collaborating with people like Louis Ray, who is... Um, actually the brother of Rio the young OG and he had heard a song somebody had played him a song and Rio was on the song and from there man um, PZ instantly took a liking to his style and his music and wanted to meet him months down the line man they ended up linking up one thing led to another man and they didn't leave each other's side and, you know they started recording music and PZ was you know putting him in interviews with him and all of that man really just pushing him and letting people know that Rio it was the next big artist on the come up, man, out of Michigan. And, you know, after that, man, the rest is history. Even after PZ went away to do his time, man, Rio just took off, became a, a superstar in his own right, created his own style, his own sound. You know, PZ signed him to Boys Entertainment. He signed, you know, RMC Mike as well to Boys Entertainment. But yeah, they, they brought just a new wave to the, um, to the Midwest scene, man. And, uh, created a new sound that a lot of people have really latched on to and have tried to, you know, put their own spin on it, man. So just being trendsetters and PZ being a part of that and seeing that before it took off, man, says a lot about just his his music IQ, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Bro, Hitboy yeah. will work with Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Jay Z and Playboy Cardi, and then so we, was, we was just in there with Peasy the other night. Peasy, shout out to Peasy, my man. Get a D, man. Y'all tearing shit up. Keep going up, man. Mm -hmm. Seriously, the whole Detroit. Jeez. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. You know, uh, yeah, Peasy did a did a little stretch. He did a little a little time, eighteen months before being released in February of 2021, and since then, man, you know, he's jumped back into the music game and. He's pretty much skyrocketed from there, you know, he's he's definitely on a higher level than he was before he went away. He's known more outside of the Midwest region. His music is doing numbers, you know, he's um collaborating with a lot of different people. But he's also, you know, investing into stuff like real estate. He's purchased, from what I understand, multiple homes on Cedar Grove, you know, and all of that too. So he's getting things in order. Biggest nigga. The biggest nigga in Detroit. Look at this shit. Nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? I wait. Diamonds outside, bitch. In August of 2022, he released his latest project, only built for Diamond Links. And for those who don't know, you know, that title is kind of like a playoff. The legendary album from uh, Raekwon, his, his debut uh, debut project back in the 90s. 
only built for Cuban links, you know. But yeah, you know, man, when it comes to Detroit rap, man, you know, PZ, he's a living legend. Despite the challenges, man, like losing people like Rick and, and Soda, being shot itself, you know, and going through the Fed case, all of that, man, he's used this as fuel. He never really let his side track him too much, man, and walk away from music. And that says a lot about, you know, PZ's focus and his resiliency, man, and really his dedication to chasing his dreams, you know what I'm saying, no matter what. You know, hats off to him for that, man, for the consistency and just being committed, man, to um, staying on track, man, and changing his life, man, changing his people's life, man. Even, you know, introduce the world to some dope artists out, outside of Detroit, like, you know, when it comes to Flint, Michigan, with people like people like Rio and RMC Mike, etc. You know, he's winning, man. Him and his whole team appear to be winning, man. It's good to see him, you know, connecting with people like Payroll and Dope Boys Cash Out, Team Eastside, you know, on the same page, making moves, uh, doing music together. All of that, man. It's a good look. It's a good look overall, man. Shout out to Peasy. Salute to Peasy, man. And, and just, you know, salute to, you know, everybody doing their thing in Detroit. Shout out to everybody rocking with a humble soul, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in, taking time out y'all day to check out the video, man. If you messing with it, hit the like button, drop a comment, you know, share it with your people. Check out the links in the description below the video, man, if you want to support the platform. Until next time, I'ma holla at y'all, man. It's your guy Lewis checking in 100. Yeah, nigga. It's the president of shit when we step. You did? See what's going on? Yeah.